All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. We are going to get started in just a few minutes, but in the meantime, here is the agenda for this morning's workshop. And we'll just wait another minute or two and then get started. For those of you who are just joining, thank you for calling in this morning to the public workshop. We are just going to wait for another couple minutes and let some more people join, and then we will get started. Okay, we're just double checking to make sure that we are broadcasting this workshop. And then we'll get started. Again, thank you for calling in. We'll get started in just a few moments. All right, I just received confirmation that we are indeed webcasting this. So I am going to get started. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, and thank you for calling into this public workshop. My name is Jeannie Mesha, and I am the Senior Environmental Scientist Supervisor of the Nonpoint Source Unit in the Division of Water Quality at the State Water Resources Control Board. And this is a public workshop for the proposed waste discharge requirements for vegetation treatment activities conducted in conformance with the California Vegetation Treatment Program. And I will be calling this the proposed general order or the vegetation proposed vegetation treatment order 
throughout the presentation because it's quite a mouthful if I try to say the full title every time. So my unit has been developing this general order for projects that treat vegetation, uh, or in other words, reduce fuel loads in order to reduce the risk of wildfire in the state. And I'll present for about 20 minutes on the proposed general order. And when I'm done, uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions and submit comments by sending an email to the email shown here on the screen. And that is nps at waterboards.ca.gov. And you can actually send an email anytime through, throughout the presentation. We have somebody that's monitoring the inbox and who will read your questions and comments aloud for the group when I am done with the presentation. And we appreciate you working with us in this virtual format. We would prefer to be doing this in person um, so that we could see your faces and hear your voices, but this is what we have to work with for now. Uh, one other thing, when you, when you do send an email, uh, can you please include your name and your organization if, if you are representing an organization? Okay, thank you very much. And we will get started with the presentation. So as, as we know, California is, has a wildfire crisis and wildfire has continued to increase in size and severity over the last decade, with 2020 being the worst year on record. Nearly 10,000 fires burned, over 4.2 million acres, uh, which is more than 4% of California's land mass and 13 of the 20 most destructive fires in California's history occurred in the last five years alone. Furthermore, the length of the fire season is estimated to have increased by seven, 75 days as um, large wildfires are starting earlier and lasting later than in previous years. So in response to ongoing wildfire, the governor's office has taken a number of actions to mitigate the risk of wildfire and to respond to this problem. In 2018, the governor's office issued executive order B5218, which among other things requires state agencies to increase the pace and scale of forest treatments on state and private lands to 500,000 acres per year to reduce wildfire risk. And the term forest treatments basically means reducing the fuel load on the landscape and returning the landscape to a more natural condition that reduces extreme fire events. So California's Department of Forestry and Fire Protection and many other local, state and federal agencies are working to increase the pace and scale of vegetation treatment throughout California to meet this goal. In response to this goal, to treat vegetation on 500,000 acres of state and private land, the Board of Forestry and Fire Protection developed a vegetation treatment program, which is sometimes referred to as the CalVTP. And this program essentially consists, oops, essentially consists of a programmatic environmental impact report that assessed the potential environmental impacts from a range of predefined vegetation treatment activities, which I will explain what those are in another slide or two. And the environmental impact report also describes practices and mitigation measures that can reduce the, the, in, the environmental impacts of these vegetation treatment activities, um, including impacts to water quality. The programmatic environmental impact report was adopted by the Board of Forestry in December 2019. And it's a streamlined process for people and agencies to comply with the California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA when they conduct vegetation treatment activities on lands under state responsibility. The environmental impact report or the programmatic environmental impact report guides project proponents through all the steps necessary to comply with CEQA for certain types of vegetation treatment projects. 
And the water boards, the state water board and the regional water quality control boards participated in the development of this program and provided input to the Board of Forestry on the potential water quality impacts from vegetation treatment, such as impacts from herbicide application and impact of work, work within sensitive areas. So I mentioned that there are certain, there was a predefined, um, predefined vegetation treatment activities considered in the Cal VTP. And these include uh, prescribed burning, which includes both pile burning and broadcast burning. The mechanical treatment of vegetation, which includes cutting, uprooting, um, and chopping existing vegetation. It also includes manual treatment of vegetation. The Calvi TB also includes prescribed herbivory, and then also ground level application of herbicides, and then also ongoing maintenance of all of these vegetation treatment activities. So while the State Water Board fully supports the goal of reducing wildfire risk by increasing the pace and scale of vegetation treatment, the State Water Board also has to ensure that water quality is protected from degradation. Some of the water quality impacts that, that could happen from improperly conducted vegetation treatment includes the introduction of pesticides and herbicides to waters of the state, the introduction of nutrients and pathogens from livestock, reduced canopy cover over streams as the result of removing trees, which could lead to the increase of temperature in waters, and then also the loss of soil stability and increased erosion from removing vegetation. So we have been working on this proposed general order to make sure that water quality is protected from these vegetation treatment activities. And we have been making, we have been working to make sure that this order aligns very closely with the Board of Forestry's California Vegetation Treatment Program. Our proposed general order would permit vegetation treatment activities that are conducted in conformance with the Board of Forestry's program. And I'll explain in the next couple slides what in conformance means. But in, as a general overview, the proposed general order would not create any new conditions for vegetation treatment activities that are not already described in the Board of Forestry's vegetation treatment program. The proposed general order would not require any fees and there would be a very simple uh, process for enrolling in the State Water Board's general order, proposed general order. And because we worked closely with the Board of Forestry when they were developing the California Vegetation Treatment Program, and we were able to provide input on water quality, potential water quality impacts from vegetation treatment, we have confidence that if people follow the Board of Forestry's program, then impacts to water quality should be avoided. And also by working with the Board of Forestry, we are keeping our order streamlined and efficient while also supporting the goal of the state to increase the pace and scale of vegetation treatment. So I'm gonna talk about what it means to be in conformance with the California Vegetation Treatment Program. And what this means is basically that project proponents must complete a project, what's called a project specific analysis. And what this is, is uh, providing basic project information to CAL FIRE about the location, size, and the treatment type, the vegetation treatment type. It also includes a review of the potential environmental impacts of the uh, vegetation treatment activity and uh, completing an environmental checklist of the potential environmental impacts. The project specific analysis also includes identifying what are called standard project requirements and mitigation measures to reduce impacts. And the Board of Forestry has listed these standard project requirements and mitigation measures in their programmatic environmental impact report. And then the project specific analysis uh, uh, 
requires a project proponent to make a finding of whether their their project is within the scope or not within the, within the scope of the programmatic environmental impact report um, analysis. And so for our for the state water board's proposed general order, the project must have a within the scope finding. So the the standard project requirements and the mitigation measures to reduce impacts are things like um, delineating protected resources, including wetlands with highly visible flagging, limiting dust by using dust suppressants and um, limiting speeds of vehicles, avoiding the removal of riparian vegetation that could reduce stream shading and increase stream temperatures, suspending work during heavy precipitation, and other practices to reduce um, environmental impacts. So the other requirements of the proposed general order would be that project proponents actually implement the standard project requirements and mitigation measures related to water quality. The order would also require that project proponents comply with regional water quality control board basin plan prohibitions. And then it would also require project proponents to allow water board staff access to the site for compliance if necessary. It's not expected that the water boards will do many inspections and it will, um, inspections will likely be in response to complaints of impacts to water quality. So in order to enroll in the proposed general order, project proponents would only need to follow the California Vegetation Treatment Program process with CAL FIRE. So no additional information would need to be provided to the State Water Board. And CAL FIRE and the State Water Board have agreed to work together to share information. Um, so CAL FIRE will be providing information to the State Water Board, uh, providing the project specific analysis and the post project completion report to the State Water Board. The State Water Board will review project information and then issue a notice of applicability to the uh, project proponent. And if there are any specific uh, water regional water quality control board basin plan prohibitions, these will be indicated in the, the letter. As I mentioned before, no fees will be assessed for um, enrollment in the proposed general order. So the proposed general order is out for public review currently. The comment period closes on April 5th at noon. The State, Wa State Water Board staff will review comments and address questions um, and revise the proposed order as necessary. And then we tentatively are planning to present the order to the State Water Board for adoption at the July 6th board meeting. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you. There is a website, two websites listed on the screen right now. The first one is the State Water Board's website on the proposed general order. The second website is the Board of Forestry's website on the California Vegetation Treatment Program. And then below that is contact information for myself and one of my staff who has been working on this proposed general order. And now I'd like to open it up to questions and comments. As I mentioned earlier, if you would like to ask a question or submit a comment, please send your question or comment to the email shown on the screen. Please include your name and organization if you are representing an organization and we will read the comments aloud in the order that they are received. So, Mike or Chris, do we have any questions in the non-point source inbox? Yes, let's start with the first question. This is from Donna Matskovich. Her question is, vegetation treatment activities 
to include ground level application of herbicides? How can you guarantee the offset of long-term negative effects on the ecosystem with round level herbicide application as a vegetation treatment activity, focusing on the primary producers at the bottom of the food chain, especially the effect of insects? Who will be monitoring? Where? Monitor all seasons? How long will monitoring continue? And if harmful results are seen immediately, will the herbicide herbicides application cease? And she cites a case study, negative effects of common herbicides on non-target invertebrates by Debbie, Debbie Albanese, summer 2019, Georgia Southern. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. And thank you, Donna, for that, that question. We understand the concern of the use of herbicide and pesticides in the state. And we appreciate uh, the inclusion of that article for us or that um, study for us to look at. And the response that we have for your question is that we are relying on herbicides and pesticides that have been approved for use by the um, by US EPA and by our partner, partner organization, Department of Pesticide Regulations. And so those two agencies study pesticides and herbicides to make sure that they are safe for use in the environment. And the Board of Forestry's vegetation treatment program has project standard project requirements to make sure that the herbicides are used appropriately and according to um, label requirements. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go to the next question. This is from Jesse Noel. Jesse asks, what species are included by the term target in the draft language? Provide a list. Also, please provide information on which toxics are detectable or manifest in the herbicide treated material and surrounding soil. What effects does application have on the plant community and food webs? Do any toxins get into the air? What impact do the toxics pose to firefighters or workers? Again, very good question. And we do understand the concerns of uh, impacts of herbicides on the environment and on people. And to um, reiterate my response to the previous question, all herbicides must be complied with uh, or must be applied in compliance with label requirements. There are also other standard pro project requirements incorporated in the uh, California Vegetation Treatment Program, which requires that project proponents create a spill prevention and response plan prior to beginning herbicide treatment activities um, to um, prohibit the application of herbicides during precipitation, and then also to prohibit non-aquatic herbicide um, applications from being applied within 50 feet of a water body or within the water course and lake protection zones. Um, there are also requirements to prevent um, herbicide drift when applying herbicides. Um, so there is there are a number of standard project requirements and mitigation measures listed in the Board of Forestry's uh, California Vegetation Treatment Program to reduce, if not completely avoid, harmful effects of, of herbicides um, for this program. Okay, next question. This question is from Mark Snyder at the Solano County Water Agency. He says, hi, will a recording for the vegetation treatment activities public workshop be available? If yes, where may I view it? Thank you. Yes, a recording will absolute, absolutely be available. And um, Chris, do you have the website that we can share where this recording will be available? I think it will be available on epa.net, but um, I don't have the recording yet. That will be posted when it's finished. Okay, 
Yes, we'll post it on our vegetation treatment, um, our proposed order website. And that is, we will post it on the Water Board's uh, general order for vegetation treatment activities website. And that website's shown on the screen right now. Okay, next question. This question is from Richard Harris, a PhD, a consulting forest ecologist. This question is, is the state board intending to regulate vegetation management activities such as wildland fuel treatments that are not done under the umbrella of the CAL FIRE PTEIR, i.e. activities done by safe councils, RCDs, et cetera? That's a good question. So we, the, the proposed general order would permit activities that are done, conducted in conformance with the programmatic environmental impact report. So it is my understanding that fire safe councils and RCDs can utilize the programmatic environmental impact report to comply with CEQA for their activities, in which case fire safe councils RCDs would be eligible for enrollment in the proposed general order. So I hope that that answers the question. Um, if you have any follow-up questions to, to my response, please submit an email. Okay, this next question. Uh, is from Dr. Peter M.J. Hess. Peter writes, I work in Lake County, California in wildlife danger mitigation through the creation of defensible space around homes and businesses and along road right-of-ways. My family lost two homes in the 2015 Valley Fire and we have no intention of repeating that experience. The invasive Scotch broom and indigenous species such as scrub oak and chemise are highly flammable. I am permanently eradicating brush through the cut and paint method used by Cal Fire and the Nature Conservancy. With surgical precision, we cut the plant an inch from the ground and paint the stuff around the cambium line with the 50% glycophosphate solution of Roundup. The results are remarkable with basically 100% root eradication after six weeks and no measurable effect on surrounding vegetation or insect life. Glycophosphate is less toxic than vinegar or table salt, both of which have de de deleterious effects on other plants and on soil. Glycophosphate is absorbed into the root of the plant where it interrupts the shikimate biological pathway and starves the plant. Animals do not have this biochemical pathway and thus are not affected. Along with prescribed fire and mechanical digging out root systems, Glycophosphate is a critically important tool in our work to increase the wildfire defense in the WUI. We continue to use it with confidence. Thank you very much for, your, for that comment. We appreciate the information that you provided. Okay, next question. This question is from Wes Bolson from per Perimeter Solutions. He says, given multiple comments were received that long-term retardants, which are listed on the US Forest Service qualified products lists have explicit federal approval for preventative application, as well as the ability for CAL FIRE to tier CEQA approval under their existing CEQA analysis, how could the water board go about including this category of federally and California state QPL approved long-term retardant products into the final order? If the state water resources control board waits to address federally approved long-term retardants through a separate order, it could delay the use of this critical fire prevention tool another two or more years, which could have devastating repercussions in California. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. And we are aware of the um, of the uh, of people beginning to use the long-term fire retardants to 
manage vegetation and manage uh, future wildfires. We, I think um, additional research is needed on the use of this material in the environment and its effect on water quality before we can make a statement about um, how this should and can be used in the environment. I will say that the Board of Forestry, Veg Forestry's Vegetation Treatment Program does not consider the use of long-term fire retardants for uh, managing wildfire risk. But we do appreciate that comment and are aware of the potential, of its potential use in the state for uh, wildfire, uh, to, for managing wildfire risk. Okay, next question is from John Armstrong from the Sierra Club Water Committee. And he has his questions in a Word document, so one moment. Okay, questions for the State Water Board about their draft general order concerning herbicide usage. Six questions. Under vegetation treatment activities can include the following. Prescribed pile burning and broadcast burning. Question, is this really done or just listed as possible? Okay, so we're gonna go, yeah, I think it's a good idea to go through these one at a time. So is prescribed pile burning really done or, can you, sorry, Mike, can you repeat that question? Yeah, definitely. So his first question is, under vegetation treatment activities can include the following section of the order. He highlights prescribed pile burning and broadcast burning. Question, is this really done or just listed as possible? It is my um, understanding that this is really done. Okay. So both pile burning and broadcast burning. Okay. He continues, um, mechanical, tr mechanical treatment to cut, uproot, crush, compact, or chop existing vegetation. And then he also states that vegetation treatment activities can include the following, including manual treatment to cut, clear, or prune herbaceous or woody species. And his question is, are mechanical treatment to cut, uproot, crush, compact, or chop existing vegetation and manual treatment to cut, clear, or prune herbaceous or woody species biomass harvesting left on site to rot or both? Um, that is a good question, and I do not know the answer to that. I believe some material can be left on site, but some must also be removed. And we will have to look at the uh, programmatic environmental impact report to see what the uh, specific requirements are for leaving biomass material on site. Okay. Um, still under vegetation treatment activities can include the following. Um, he lists ground level, uh, ground level application of herbicides. And then the question starts, full strength purple label Roundup with its 50% glycophosphate kill, or in parentheses, the anti-life, kills aquatic life once it reaches water. It's $200 a gallon at Lowe's and Home Depot, available to anyone. Will it or similar be the herbicide of choice in usage by the Forest Service and contractors of California, given its known ultra deadly impact on amphibians, reptiles, and aquatic life in general? And then he also asks, how do you police big agro, big agro chemical? Is that possible California all by itself? Yes, thank you for your, your question. The, uh, the California Vegetation Treatment Program developed by the Board of Forestry does not allow any use of non-aquatic non herbicides um, within 50 feet of any water of the state. And that should, should prevent um, the discharge of non-aquatic herbicides to waters of the state. Any application of herbicides within um, or any application of aquatic herbicides does require notification to the applicable regional water quality control board. Okay. 
Okay. John goes on to ask, is this herbicidal vegetation treatment also directed at California chaparral? Yes. Yes, this, the vegetation treatment program includes vegetation treatment in um, what's called the treatable landscape within the state responsibility area. And that does include chaparral um, uh, ecosystems. John goes on to ask, under vegetation treatment wastes, felled trees, are these trees small diameter, small diameter unmarketable other than as biomass or do they constitute a traditional timber sale? So no commercial timber operations are, will be permitted under this proposed general order. Um, can you, Mike, can you repeat the question? Sure. So he's pointing to uh, a section of the order under vegetation, vegetation treatment wastes, and then uh, a section of that for felled trees. Are these trees small diameter, unmarketable other than as biomass, or do they constitute a traditional timber sale? They do not constitute a traditional timber sale. It's possible that some of the material may be used as um, biomass. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, herbicide application always results in some amount of silting of streams. Silt stifles respiration in the aquatics in aquatic life, encourages retention dams, represents a permanent soil erosion. Are there any erosion control considerations in place? Yes, yes. The, uh, the Board of Forestry's Vegetation Treatment Program has a number of standard project requirements and mitigation measures to prevent um, and avoid the um, disruption of soils and erosion into waters of the states. Um, And Chris, can you read some of the standard project requirements that are intended to reduce erosion? Yes. <clears throat> um, the standard project requirements generally um, developed to reduce erosion are SPR GO 1 through 7, 8. And um, hydrology, I think we have one through five. They are the same as they are in the Cal VTP. For example, uh, we have a standard project requirement that is suspending disturbance during heavy precipitation. Uh, we have one that limits high ground uh, pressure vehicles to reduce compaction. Uh, we have stabilized disturbed soil areas. We do erosion monitoring, or if it's necessary, if it's identified. Um, drain storm water via water breaks, minimize burn pile size, and uh, be careful of its location, uh, minimize erosion with a bunch of best management practices listed in SPR GO7. Um, some of the ones specific to water like hydrology, um, we have avoid construction of new roads, water quality protections for prescribed herbivory, uh, identify and protect water courses and lake protection zones, and it lists uh, best management practices for the different water course classes. Um, we have quite a few examples of those. Is that enough? That's great. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next email. This email is from Randall Hanbelt. He states, you said you would get started and then the sound left and I hear and see nothing. What is going on? And this email came in at 9.13 a.m. Um, uh, from my, uh, just from me looking at the presentation, I could definitely hear it at 9.13 a.m. Okay. Yeah, I'm well, not sure we, what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry for that, those technical difficulties. I'm not sure uh, what we can do to help you. I will say that the, 
recording of this presentation will be posted on our website. So you will be able to go back and listen to the, the full presentation, but we do apologize for those technical difficulties. The next question is from Susan Kaidel at United States Environmental Protection Agency. She states, please clarify if federal lands are addressed by this general order. And if so, are limitations of which? So this general order does not include federal lands. So this general order will only uh, permit vegetation treatment projects that are conducted on state responsibility area, uh, which are lands that are under the responsibility of um, the state of California. The next question is from Don Peterson uh, from CAL FIRE. Don asks, is the waiver an annual enrollment? No, the, this proposed general order is actually general waste discharge requirements and is not a waiver of waste discharge requirements. Therefore, it uh, will be one enrollment um, until for the life of the vegetation treatment project and will not require annual re-enrollment. Re-enrollment. The next email looks like a follow-up email from Richard Harris, um, PhD, consulting forest ecologist. Richard states, RCDs, for example, act as lead agencies for CEQA. We do not rely on the PTEIR to conduct our CEQA analysis or to define our treatments. Will RCDs have to submit their environmental analysis, analysis to CAL FIRE for review relative to the general order? Will the state board be reviewing CEQA analysis done by RCDs relative to compliance with the general order? That's a very good question. And it's um, definitely up to the RCDs to um, determine how they would like to comply with CEQA. And if RCDs and other agencies determine that they would like to pursue their own CEQA analysis, that unfortunately would not be eligible. Those projects would not be eligible for this proposed general order and would have to go through a separate permitting process with the Regional Water Quality Control Board. And um, I cannot speak to what CAL FIRE would require for um, those types of uh, vegetation treatment projects. I can only speak to what the, the water boards would require. And because there's been um, a high level of analysis of these vegetation treatment projects through the Board of Forestry's programmatic environmental impact report, that is why we are uh, moving forward with a proposed general order that relies on that, that environmental impact report. So, um, to reiter reiterate, that would be something you would need to work out with your um, individual regional water board. The next question is from Isabella Langon from the California Native Plant Society. She asks, can you elaborate on the State Water Resources Control Board's process for review of PSAs and other project information provided by CAL FIRE. What are the standards for determining whether the project complies with the general order? Does the State Water Resource Control Board have authority to reject a project or require that the project implement additional SPRs or MMs before approval? Yes, we, that's a very good question. And we um, are going to do a very cursory review of the project specific analyses that are provided by CAL FIRE and rely on CAL FIRE's involvement of the projects to uh, make sure that the appropriate standard project requirements and mitigation measures have been approved. We will also be looking at projects to see if any uh, basin plan prohibitions, water quality control plan prohibitions apply in the, uh, the project area. 
and those will be added to the project or we will uh, note those prohibitions in our um, uh, notice of applicability or notice of enrollment when we send that to the project proponent. But we, we don't intend the review of the project specific analysis to be a, um, a, a long or um, a very, um, we don't spend, intend to spend a lot of time on the project specific analysis review. The next question comes from Larry Hansen from California River Watch. Larry asks or states, the invisibility of pesticides makes it difficult to track especially longer term effects. So safety by EPA, et cetera, is kind of meaningless, especially that the water board's oversight is if there is, is there if, is there is already an impact reported. Is there a better way to limit this besides waiting for an impact? Also, following label instructions assumes the applicator is paying attention to it. This is not a protection. Your comments? By the way, Glycophosphate is found everywhere on the planet and is the DDT of our time. Another invisible where cumulative impacts are killing more than targeted species. Your comments. Very good questions and comments. So the standard project requirements and the mitigation measures that are listed in the Board of Forestry's vegetation treatment program are intended to prevent impacts before they occur. And I, I agree with you that pesticides are invisible um, and aren't something that you can see happening um, you know, in, in real time. However, the, the, the standard project requirements and the mitigation measures that I um, listed off, maybe not very clearly, um, are intended to prevent those impacts. Um, so, you know, and that's that's what we are relying on to to minimize and avoid impacts from herbicide application. So, in response to your second question, um, let me see if I can pull that up. The second oh. question was: as following label instructions assumes the applicator is attention to it, uh, paying attention to it. This is not a protection. Your comments? Yes, the. Um, application of herbicides has to be done by a licensed pest control advisor. And so provided that the person ap applying the pesticides is trained and certified, then we can, we can um, hope that they are, are doing it correctly. Okay, the next email is from Kristen Van Dam, uh, an ecologist at East Bay, East Bay Regional Park District. Kristen says, hello, please consider this question in regards to permit authority, thank you. Question, my organization is implementing an existing, existing permitted fuels reduction plan that covers only some of our lands. In the case of lands with an existing established CAL FIRE SRA on publicly owned property, would the CAL VTP CEQA authority cover fuels reduction work? Thank you. I am um, not sure I entirely understand that question. So I'm going to pull that question up myself and read it. So your organization is implementing an existing permitted fuels reduction plan, covers only some of our lands. So I guess the, the question, it would depend on what the vegetation treatment activity is. If it's one of the predefined vegetation treatment activities in the um, Cal VTP 
programmatic environmental impact report. And the project is not affecting any new species that were not analyzed in the environmental impact report, then yes, I believe you would be able to make a finding that your project is within the scope of the Cal VTP programmatic environmental impact report. But without having other information about the project, I can't answer your question um, definitively. The next email uh, is a follow-up from Randall, Randall Henvel, who had a hard time uh, listening to the presentation. He states, this is not a good format. You do not have to read this. Had I not gotten back on, I would have heard her response. Thank you for your comment. The next email is from Petra Eberspacher from uh, Terra Phase Engineering. Terra says, hello, is mechanical uprooting considered a land disturbing activity that is also regulated under the California Construction General Permit? Thank you in advance for taking the time to address this question. That's a very good question. And it's not, it would not be considered of a construction activity. It depends on the, the purpose of the activity. And if the activity is um, intended to clear land for development or construction, then it would be covered under the California Construction General Permit. If it's just for reducing wildfire risk, then it would be um, covered under this proposed general order that we're talking about today. We have a follow-up email from Richard Harris, a PhD, consulting forest ecologist. Richard says, you stated that if a R a RCD, for example, decides to do its own CEQA analysis and not rely on the PTEIR, that they would have to pursue permitting with the regional board. Are you suggesting that they will be required to obtain some kind of permit from their regional board? That has not been the case to date. That is, that is what I'm suggesting. Um, it, it's very dependent on the type of activity and the location of the activity. So um, that's something that would need to be discussed with the relevant regional water quality control board. And um, the, again, the, um, the size of the, the activity, the proximity to water, um, the, you know, how much equipment's being used, how much vegetation is being cleared, whether there are roads being um, constructed or um, upgraded for the activity. There, there are a lot of factors that go into deciding whether it, it needs to be regulated um, or um, permitted by the water boards. Um, as I tried to convey in my presentation, the Board of Forestry's Vegetation Treatment Program does um, look at a a pretty uh, specific set of vegetation treatment activities that do have the potential to discharge waste to waters of the state, which is why we have, we are working on this proposed general order. At this time, there are no further comments or email questions. Okay, well, thank you, Mike, for reading those questions. And thank you, Chris, for providing um, information for us. And thank you, everybody, for your comments and questions. We really appreciate them. We uh, are continuing to accept questions and comments. So please, um, please submit comments or questions to us by the deadline of April 5th. The instructions for submitting comments are on our website. And um, this presentation will be uh, posted on our website for people to review at a later date. All right, well, thank you very much again. And um, we will be looking for comments and questions.